There is no shortage of evidence about the worsening problem of housing affordability and its impact on our society. Experts in affected communities have informed the <coughs> South Wales Select Committee into the Social, Public and Affordable Housing that I established and the Senate Economics Reference Committee's recent inquiry into affordable housing. The public has been informed by media reports about skyrocketing sale and rental prices and a growing number of economics and housing commentators who warn about the growing risk to the opportunity and well-being that comes with having a secure, appropriate and affordable home. The New South Wales Government has been informed by respondents to their discussion paper and the feedback report released last week by, begins by acknowledging that the Government were told that they should, quote, take a big picture approach to understanding what is required, recognise the economic and financial context in which we provide social housing, recognise the relationships between the private housing markets and the demand for social housing, implement reforms to improve affordability and security in the private rental market. These statements recognise the reality that housing opportunity falls along a continuum, that right now we face massive pressures at all points along it and that relieving those pressures requires a whole of government approach. Homelessness is rising. From the 2006 census to 2011, the rate in New South Wales population rose by 20%, with numbers rising from 22,219 to 28,190. For more than a decade, public housing stock has declined and the transfer to community housing providers to generate more stock is lagging. The social housing waiting list has grown to almost 60,000 applicants and in many areas, the expected waiting time is at least a decade. The private rental market has seen median rents continue to rise and vacan vacancy rates remain low. New home ownership is becoming increasingly difficult as speculative investment drives the market upwards. The latest Demographia International Housing Affordability Survey rates Sydney as the third least affordable major market in the world. Median home prices in New South Wales increased by 7.1% in the last annual figures and by 33% over the past five years. Every part of our housing system is in crisis. Solutions are needed across the whole continuum and they are available. For home ownership, federal and state taxes contribute to skyrocketing prices and, and fail to deliver better housing supply. It's time for the major parties to get serious about the problems with negative gearing and capital gains tax and about transitioning away from stamp duty and look towards land tax. Financial sector reform should be on the table, even though better interest rates for owner-occupiers compared to investors, and as New Zealand's Re Reserve Bank is doing, increasing the deposit ratio required by investors. Our rental sector can be transformed through legislative change to provide greater security of tenure and protection for renters, while maintaining a healthy market for investors, a balance that many other countries manage much better than us. Social and affordable housing needs an urgent boost, beginning with the recognition that this is an investment in critical infrastructure. Planning reforms can ensure social and affordable housing supply through inclusionary zoning in new developments and the capture of a fair share of the increased values from rezonings and new developments can fund the delivery of new housing. We need to address the shameful reality that the housing crisis has its greatest <coughs> impact on some of the society's most, most vulnerable and disadvantaged. Homelessness is increasing for older women, families and youth. The state <coughs> that claims to be number one should not fail its people at the most basic level of delivering shelter. Aboriginal communities across the state need the opportunity to develop housing, which can happen by resolving the backlog of Aboriginal claims. People living in residential <coughs> parks need protection against the greed that's driving some operators to, return to seek higher returns. There are many actions that could start immediately. There is no shortage of well-supported ideas. I call on the government to act and to begin acting on the 41 recommendations of the Social and Affordable Housing Inquiry delivered in August last year. It's time to have the courage to act and give every member of our community the security and opportunity that comes with a stable, affordable home. 